Hello there, my name is Sue Shardlow. I am the Developer Community Manager here at Redis. Thanks so much for joining us today for day 12 of December. So it's a special day because it's the 12th of the 12th. And it's the same way around whether you are writing it in the American way or the British way, which is really good because it can get confusing sometimes when you're reading the date. So today is uh, day 12 of December, and we are doing a live stream every day, Monday to Friday, here on YouTube and Twitch to introduce you to some very basic uh, concepts and features of Redis, just a very basic taster for you, just a little 15 minute bite-sized pieces Monday to Friday. So this being day 12, you would think that today is the 12th video, but actually it's the 13th because yesterday we had a bonus video. So please do go to YouTube and check that out. We had two videos, videos yesterday, a bonus video just for you. So I said that we're doing live streams Monday to Friday. So what are we doing at the weekends? Well, we don't work Saturday and Sunday. So Saturdays and Sundays, we are setting you a very, uh, very gentle, fun challenge just to see how you can use your newfound Redis uh, knowledge and skills. So if you go to our GitHub, you can find that challenge. It's not graded or anything like that. Uh, you can just submit a pull request if you want to take part in that. And we'll have a little look over that uh, with you. So there, that's what we've been doing since there have been two weekends in December so far. We've had two challenges. It's not too late to do those two challenges and keep your eyes peeled for a fresh challenge this Saturday. If you want to find out about our schedule for the live streams, please go to developer.redis.com slash devcember. You'll find all the recordings of all the, uh, the previous 12 videos for the 11 days we've done so far on that page. And you will also find a little teaser for tomorrow's topic as well. So we're releasing the topics day by day. We're not releasing them all up front, just to keep a little suspense for you there. But today we will put up tomorrow's topic. So on to today's topic. We have a set of new client libraries, which you've already mentioned. And Simon, who's the head of developer advocacy here at Redis, has already shown you the Python one. And he used it yesterday in a, uh, in a demo. And so today, we have our good friend and colleague, Guy Royce, who is going to talk to us about the new Redis client for Node. So let's bring Guy into the mix. Howdy, howdy. Hello, Guy. How are you today? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I like to say fair to middling, but I, I feel above fair to middling. So uh, you know, I, I don't know what's greater than fair to middling, you know, oh, in that I continuum think... of, you know, of goodness. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Fair to middling would indicate it's kind of a little bit sort of mediocre and average. I don't think that that describes you at all. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's in it's like slightly above mediocre. It's like between mediocre and good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go with good. Let's round it up to good. Let's go with great. We're going to be going go with great today. I'm doing great. Good. All right. <laughs> well, I'll leave you to it. Give us a quick 15 minute, 15 or so minutes on the Redis own for Node.js. I'm really looking forward to this. Cool. Happy to do it. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Guy. And uh, today, I'm going to be showing you uh, Redis Ohm for Node.js. Uh, Redis Ohm is, um, uh, it's Redis OM. Actually, I'm going to share my screen here so you, you can all see it. There we go. And uh, Redis Ohm is a um, object mapping for Redis. It's, it's object mapping and more, actually, if you look at that little on, and more right there. Uh, but right now, it's mostly object mapping. And the OM, OM stands for object mapping. And uh, we've got four versions of these client libraries for Redis, uh, one for Python, one for uh, .NET, one for uh, uh, Java Spring, and one for Node.js, which is the one that I worked on and the one we're going to talk about today. Um, Redis Ohm uh, provides a lot of abstractions to let you take uh, your classes in, in these languages and serialize them right into uh, Redis uh, as hashes or as JSON objects and to serialize them back out and uh, query them and search them and stuff. And I'm gonna do a quick um, code, live coding exercise thing to show you how this works. And so let me uh, pull my uh, my screen over here. So you can see here, I've got a blank slate of code, nothing to see here. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be occasionally looking over here to my right, which would be your left, because I've got, a, I've got all this, I've got the solution over here on this screen because I'm gonna totally cheat and copy and paste from it. So I'm not just gonna, I'm not, you're not gonna have to sit here and watch me type. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste segments of it and paste it over. 
So uh, when we're using Redis Ohm, the very, very first thing we need to do, of course, is install it. That is a npm install uh, redis dash ohm dash a save. Uh, that's all you got to do. If you've got a node project set up already, you do need to have Redis up and running already. I have Redis running over here in a Docker image. Um, you can also do it with uh, Redis Cloud, which is a great way to get all these uh, libraries up and running. It helps if you have Redis Search and you have Redis JSON as well. It doesn't require it, although the things I'm going to show you today do make use of Redis JSON and Redis Search because I think they're pretty cool, pretty awesome. So we've got our little uh, uh, Redis Ohm in there, version 0.1.3. Caveat, this is a preview. Things could change. It's fine. Uh, just be aware that that's a, a possibility. So, um, and uh, yeah. So let's write some code. So there are th there are four classes, entities, things. Entity is a bad word in, in, in a way because it's it's one of my words uh, that you need to worry about in Redis. There's the clients. Uh, these are the things that connect to Redis. Um, behind the scenes, I'm using Node Redis four. There are entities. These are the things we're going to serialize to and from. Uh, they're the, the 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 things that we want to save to Redis. We have a repository, uh, which is um, associated with a particular entity, and we have a schema, which is instructions on how to take that entity and put it into Redis and how to take it out of Redis and put it into an entity. Uh, so we'll start out with just creating a simple client. Uh, here we'll just say let client equal new client. And then uh, if you don't pass anything, it'll use a local Redis, but you can pass in a Redis connection string like this one here, Redis colon slash slash local host, colon 6379. That's the default string. Um, I'm going to pass it in just to show you that you can pass them in. And then uh, once you have a client, you need to open it. So we'll open that client. And now uh, the client uh, has, it can be opened and closed. It's got commands to execute uh, arbitrary commands in case you don't, uh, you need to do something Redis Ohm can't do. Uh, but it's also passed into the repository so that it can the repository can talk to Redis on your behalf. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just just to show that this is working. Uh, we're going to paste in a little bit of cheaty code here. Uh, I'm just going to call ping uh, with, and get a pong response and just just to prove that all my plumbing is working here. So let's run that code. And you see that we get the nice pong response. We we'll also see that it didn't end. So I'm going to hit Control C, and that's because our connection is still open. So if we uh, our client is still open. So if we close our client, that will go away. So let's go ahead and close our client. It said it would go away and it made a liar to me because I did not save my file there. Let's try that again. There we go. Now it closes properly. Turns out if you want to run the code, you've got to save the file. Pro tip there, kids. So um, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and run one more command here uh, whenever I run the script because I'm going to run this multiple times as I show it to you and Objects are going to accumulate in Redis, and I really just want to have one. So uh, I'm going to do a flush all to uh, wipe that database clean before each run. So, so clients, they're the things that talk to Redis. Entities are the objects that we use to interact with Redis. And so uh, to, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the things we're, we're dealing with. And so uh, I, I want to build sort of a fun and silly and uh, ridiculous example as I want to do. And so, uh, I'm going to do, uh, I'm, I'm building entities for a website called paranormal.dev, uh, where people can post sightings of like Bigfoot and ghosts and UFOs and things like that. And then, you know, paranormal.dev sends out investigators to, to you know, investigate these, uh, these alleged sightings and, um, and then update the data. So uh, we want to have a database full of sightings. So we got a sighting and, to, and that sighting extends entity. And so this is all you need to do create an entity. So we now have a citing entity. It, it, it's an entity because it extends entity. Uh, it's an empty class. It doesn't have to be an empty class, but we'll get back to that, assuming we have time. Um, once we have our uh, client and our entity, we need a schema. The schema defines how uh, this entity is going to be mapped to Redis and vice versa, and it adds a whole bunch of settings, uh, properties to your entity so that, um, for example, uh, you know, all the fields that you care about, it adds methods uh, dynamically there. So uh, to create our schema, we say uh, new schema, a lot, of, a lot of news here. And the schema takes uh, two main arguments, but it really takes three. Uh, the first argument is uh, the entity. So uh, this is the constructor, uh, the, the, the class, the constructor, the constructor function. And so uh, when we call new schema, it will take that uh, constructor and it will add 
a bunch of fields to it. And we define those fields with our second argument here. I'm just going to copy some from uh, my cheaty code here. Um, there are a few types of fields that we can add to our schema. We can add numbers. So here we've got the date. Uh, this is the date of the UFO sighting, or the date of the report of it, anyhow. And we're storing those as uh, Unix timestamps, uh, you know, milliseconds since 1970, which is roughly how old I am. <laughs> um, and so uh, we're going to store those as numbers. And um, we have our title here. And that is a string. So that would be a JavaScript string that we're going to store in Redis. Uh, I've set the flag text search to true on here. And this uh, enables Redis search's full text search. Uh, so we can look for words within it. So we can say, give me, um, you know, all the sightings that have the word, you know, trailer in them, or maybe have the word Bigfoot in them. Uh, description, same deal. Uh, we've got a title and a description for our sighting. You know, you know, this is, I saw Bigfoot in the woods. And this is more details about your uh, encounter with Bigfoot. Um, strings do not have to be text searchable. If you don't specify text search, or if you say text search false, then uh, you, you're matching on that whole string. You can't, you can't search within it then. And so here I've got the county and state of that particular sighting uh, that I, want, I would like to track. Uh, so we know where it happened. And these are things like, you know, the county within the United States and the state within the United States. Uh, you can have a Boolean uh, type, which is exactly what you think it is. Uh, and here we've got an investigated flag, whether someone has investigated this sighting or not yet. And then uh, I think one of the more interesting ones is you can have arrays. Uh, so you can pass in, uh, you can create a, a, a field on your entity that is an array of strings. It's strings only for now. And we're going to call that tags. It's like a tag cloud. Now, um, to actually save these out, by default, uh, Redis is going to save these as a hash. Uh, but you can use a, a Redis a JSON, and I, I actually prefer to use Redis JSON uh, because if you uh, serialize these to a hash, then like your numbers and your strings and your booleans and your arrays are all, you know, hashes in Redis hold strings. It's a hash of strings. And we can know that one value is a number, but it's not really a number. Uh, but if we use a JSON object, uh, we can actually be true to type. The, uh, the date actually is a number. The uh, you know, the array actually is an array. The Boolean is a true false value in that JSON document. So I prefer to use Redis JSON to do this. And um, so to specify your data structure you want to store in, uh, you just pass in uh, a little optional. This is an options object. Set your data structure to JSON. It can be JSON or it can be hash. I get my little, uh, you see, hash or JSON. Uh, hash is the default. Uh, we want JSON. Cool. We defined a schema. Uh, it has modified our citing object, our citing entity. So let's go ahead and create a repository. Uh, repositories are created by calling new repository, passing in a schema and a client. And so now we've got a repository that is purpose built for creating, reading, updating, and deleting and searching uh, sightings. If we wanted to add, say, investigators, we would create another one uh, with, you know, uh, an investigator's repository. With this repository, we can now start doing some queries and creations and stuff. So I want to create a Bigfoot site or a, a UFO sighting with this repository. So let's copy this in here. So here I'm creating a new sighting. I call repository.createEntity. This creates a, a, an empty entity with a populated ID um, and uh, but does not save it to Redis yet. Uh, we then set all our fields here. So we set our dates. We set our title, UFO from the trailer window. This is actually a true story. I saw a UFO as a kid while laying in bed out my trailer window back in the 80s. Um, and uh, actually, I lived in Medina County, Ohio at the time. So uh, uh, this has not been investigated yet. And then here's our tags. Uh, it's a UFO sighting, and there was a child witness. Save this. We just call repository.save right here, and we pass in the sighting that we want to save. Uh, when we do that, it'll return an ID, and uh, we'll get the ID back. So let's, let's do that and print out that ID. Let's run this. So if I do npm start, so it, it calls pong. That, that's still there. And then we get an ID. Now, uh, to see how this looks in Redis, um, let me go to uh, Redis Insight here. And uh, I'm, I'm going to refresh my keys. I'm connected to this already. And this is a little small, so I'm going to embiggen it. 
And uh, we got, see, we've got the citing colon and that ID. And if we go back and look at the ID, it ends in E360. This one ends in E360. So that's our JSON document. And so this is the class name of the entity. And this is the generated, randomly generated ID. Uh, and then here we see we got our JSON document. There's our dates and you know title and description and all that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm checking my time here. I'm supposed to do this in 20 minutes and I'm burning through that time real fast, ain't I? Um, so um, yeah, that's how we create and save an entity. Let's uh, let's go ahead and fetch things now. So you can also fetch. Uh, there's just a repository fetch method. So this is create. We did create, this is read. So uh, if we say repository.fetch, pass in our ID that we just got back, it will then fetch this. And I'm gonna log this out. I'm gonna run this and log it out. And we see that we get undefined. What's that? Hmm. And we get our timestamp and our title and the uh, uninvestigated and, and all, the, all the things we entered. Um, I, I created a method here. I, I called a, a property on this object that doesn't exist called data's ISO. And the intention here is that data's ISO is a human readable date. Like this date right here, not very human friendly. Um, and this is where uh, I can kind of show off the ability to uh, enhance this. This entity here is empty. But if we add a property to it, as I uh, get, get my uh, little cheaty code here in order, there we go. Uh, we have a little data's ISO. This thing can return properties and execute basic business logic. So here I've got, you know, return a new date. And then I reference one of the properties that was added by the schema, the date property. And then I convert it to a human readable string. So now I've sort of uh, created like a computed field on my entity. I could create computed fields, compound fields. I could make references to other uh, uh, repositories and then let you drill down through your data. That way you can do lots of things with this. And so this is just a real basic example. But now we see we have a nice ISO 8601 uh, formatted date there. So um, create, read, uh, we've got update and delete. Uh, but I, I want to show off uh, update and delete. They, they kind of work exactly like you expected they would. You, you, you call, uh, you know, you call dot save again. You just make some changes and you call save. Uh, to delete, you just call remove on the repository. So there's all the CRUD operations you need. But I kind of want to show off these search capabilities. So to use search, we need to create an index. And so up here, after we create a repository, we can instruct it to drop any indexes that exist already. So uh, we, you know there may be an existing index. If it doesn't exist, it'll just uh, not do anything. But if it does exist, it'll drop it. And then we'll call create index to recreate it. And this is just for demo code because we want to run this multiple times. We need to drop and create it repeatedly. So this will drop it. This creates it. So we just call repository to create index. And now we can make use of search. And the search syntax is, honestly, it's, it's probably the thing I'm most uh, most proud of having built for uh, Redis Ohm for uh, Node.js. I'll show you the, 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 the language here. It's got this real uh, semantic uh, sort of chaining interface where you, you just say repository.search and it will return an array where field name, and then you can say is greater than, or uh, you know, just greater than, or greater than or equal to. It's, it's got all this, um, you know, you can say is not greater than, um, all these really natural language sorts of things that you can do. So this particular one will find anything where there, the date is greater than 24 hours ago, uh, where the title contains the word trailer, where the state is Ohio, uh, that have not been investigated yet, and the tag is UFO. So this will find all the UFO sightings in Ohio trailers in the last 24 hours that no one's talked about yet, because of course we need to query that, right? <laughs> um, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and spit that out. Here we go, so that you can see it run. We'll adjust the tabbing here. And then if we run that, uh, we can see that it does indeed find the UFO sighting that we, we just created. We only have one in there, so of course it, it found it. Uh, but this is a real nice way to find it. Uh, um, real semantic, it's, I keep using the word semantic, but it's the part I like about it the best is this, it, it just sort of, it reads like a sentence. And uh, I find that to be uh, very, uh, very powerful. Uh, once I found it, of course, we can we can update it and remove them. And I'll go ahead and show you this code here really quick, just to or just to sort of wrap this up here. Uh, if I want to update, um, 
my particular uh, sighting, you know, I say, well, I went and investigated this UFO sighting. And in addition to being a, a UFO sighting and with a kid, it's also a close encounter of the first kind. So we'll update that. We'll call save. Um, and then if we want to remove something, then we can call remove there. And that's pretty much it is. Let, let, let's run this just to show it working. And it, there it goes. There it is working. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it. That's Redis Ohm in a nutshell. Super fast uh, introduction, I know. Uh, sorry, but uh, uh, you know, there's a lot there, and I, I could go on a lot longer. But uh, probably, probably should have wrapped this up, shouldn't I? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's all I've got. If there are any questions, please uh, leave them in the chat, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, otherwise, uh, it's back to Susan and I. Thanks so much, Guy. Yeah, sorry you felt the pressure there. And I know that, yeah, you could do probably like an entire half-day workshop on that, <laughs> couldn't you? And to, to ask you to condense it down into 15 to 20 minutes was a little bit mean, but hopefully I, uh, that's given folks a little taster of what they can do with uh, the new uh, Node.js client. Oh, you've got a nice little thank you there from Andrew Lloyd Kalachand. Nice. Thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah, and also what I did forget to mention at the very beginning was that you actually created that. You did allude to that during the thing, but yeah, I, I totally take my help to you. Create I done wrote it all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I kind of love, but I'm all sim simultaneously freaked out by some of the storytelling you do with like going <laughs> and seeking these mythical things. And um, I just like, you know, yesterday we did Seek and You May Find, and it's almost a case of like, be careful what you go looking for, because you yeah. might find it. The, the UFO sighting story is, is actually true. I, I, I do remember as a kid laying in bed and looking out the window of my trailer and seeing this like, like tuna can shaped thing in the sky with a pattern of light circling around it. But, you know, thinking back, it's looked like the gondola of a, uh, of a blimp. And the Goodyear blimp used to fly over where I lived all the time. So I'm sure it was the blimp flying back up to Akron when I was a kid. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the time I was like, it's a UFO. I saw a UFO. Oh my God. Well, I mean, in your mind, your mind did not identify it. And the definition of USO, UFO yeah, is unidentified flying object, right? And so I think that's perfectly valid. But um, I think just so that we save ourselves from freaking out, let's go with Occam's razor and just think, yeah, it must have been the blimp because it all adds up to yeah. the blimp. Well, and, and the Goodyear blimp actually did fly over the area a lot. It was a, a regular sighting, so. Yeah, yeah. But I, I know what you mean, though, because your example there really takes me back to my childhood. And we were kind of kids around the same time. Yeah. Around, you know, we were ch children in the 80s. And in the 80s, we were really obsessed with this stuff, weren't we? Yeah. Well, it was even greater in the 70s. Um, um, and so, you know, I, I was a little kid in the 70s. Was a, you know, I remember watching In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. And uh, seeing, you know, this, you know, all these crazy paranormal things that he would talk about. And uh, it's sort of, I'm sure it, it had an influence on me. It's like, yeah. well, that's the guy from Star Trek. So it must be real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because they, they'd only just gone to the moon in like in the late 60s, hadn't they? Yeah. And then, yeah, ever since then, it was just so like wild for anything space related. And then it was high tech and computing and everyone was talking yeah. about hacking. So, yeah, it definitely kind of takes me back. To my childhood hit there all that talk of like ufos and uh, aliens and stuff so yeah thanks so much for bringing that to life for us through that, uh, through that vivid example and remind me i believe the next redis monthly live is dedicated to the clients isn't it yeah so we're going to do um uh roughly four 20-minute versions of what i just did uh for each of the different redis home clients uh, that's going to be monday uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which would be, let's see, at 5, that'd be 7 p.m. Uh, UTC. And that would be, uh, what, 11 a.m. on the West Coast, I think. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be doing that right here on uh, on, on uh, the same channel here. Um, it'll be on Twitch and it'll be on YouTube. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. Um, we got um, Brian uh, presenting on Spring Data Redis, um, um, the OM. Uh, I think he calls it Roms. It's, it's, it's Redis Ohm for Spring Data Redis or something like that. Right. Um, or ROMs. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Simon presenting on the Python library. Uh, I'll be presenting on uh, Node.js. And then Steve will be presenting on um, uh, the .NET version. So should be a lot of fun. Yeah. It'll probably be long, <laughs> but that's good. Yeah, yeah. So it'll still be a taster, but um, a little bit longer. And it's more sort of meetup style as well. 
Yeah. So uh, if folks want to get a reminder of when that's going to go uh, live, then go to meetups.redis.com and you can sign up for Redis Monthly Live and then you'll get notified of all the Redis Monthly Lives as well. But uh, the next one's coming up on this coming Monday. Cool. Okay, so yeah, yeah. thanks again, Guy, for uh, doing that for us and giving Absolutely. us that little taster. So that was... Uh, two or four of the uh, Redis clients. So we already had Simon talking to us about the Python one. So check out the recording there. If you go to our YouTube channel, you'll find the recording there. It's part of the December series. Um, and we had Guy today talking about the JavaScript one. Um, and tomorrow, we've got our good friend and colleague, Steve, back again. He loved it so much earlier this week, and so did his dog, that they're coming back again to talk about the new client for .NET. So all of you .NET fans, please come back tomorrow to see Steve. One of the things I actually wanted to mention as well, if you're watching today, then uh, you may well be a JavaScripter. You might be a JavaScript fan. If you are, then check out Redis uh, University because we have got a course just for you. We've got uh, Redis, Redis for JavaScript developers which is RU102JS. So uh, yeah, that course is dedicated to you and it shows you all about how to use Redis with JavaScript. We also have the same thing for Java, RU102J. And we also have the same thing for Python as well. Again, RU102 for Python developers. So yeah, if you are a JavaScript, a, a Java person or a Python person, go and have a look at university.redis.com. If you if your Redis appetite has been wet by all of our live streams so far and you want to know more about Redis, if you want to learn more in a more structured way, in a deeper way, then check out RU101 as well at university.redis.com, which is Introduction to Redis Data Structures. If you don't fancy that right now, don't worry. Just come and join us again tomorrow. Come and see Steve and his dog and me we'll be talking to you about the new Redis client for .NET. So until then, as always, everybody, look after yourselves. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.